Тепер представляємо важливий документальний фільм про ключову роль митрополита Андрея Шептицького у врятуванні більше ніж 250 єврейських дітей від певної смерти Голокосту під час нацистської окупації України під час Другої світової війни. Фільм створено на показ під час подорожуючої конференції, яку канадська організація «Українсько-єврейська зустріч» влаштувала торік у головних містах Канади і Сполучених Штатів Америки в честь митрополита Андрея Шептицького який, ризикуючи своїм життям і майбутнім своєї церкви, переговував євреї у своїй бібліотеці і у сиротинцях при студицьких греко-католицьких монастирях. Про це розповідають свідки з Тел-Авіву, Лондону і Сполучених Штатів Америки. The Metropolitan, seeing me, ushered me to himself, and he said, he did, he did, he did, he did, he did, he did, he did. So I approached very sort of very, very, not knowing what, what is going to be this huge man and so on. And he then started stroking my hair very, very gently and looking at me. And he said, Nebisha detino, Nebisha detino. And you know, this is something that till the end of my days, I remember these words. And he said afterwards that, you know, no, no harm will come to you here. Do not be afraid. Nothing, nothing bad will happen to you here. You are safe. The time in the monastery was just a paradise for us because we came from ghetto that uh, we were short of uh, food. We were very much uh, scared because of the German uh, occupation. The monastery was um, uh, self-sufficient as a farming community, which was one of the fortunate things, because being self-sufficient, it um, provided food. And until late in 43, when the Germans took away much of the cattle and much of the equipment, uh, we really did not have problems as far as hunger is concerned. Amidst the incessant turmoil and unbearable human suffering of the Second World War in Eastern Europe, the residence of Metropolitan Archbishop Andrei Count Sheptitsky at Sobor Hoyura in Lviv remained an island of peace and refuge for all who called. I am no historian, nor am I an academician. But I am a witness to history, at least to some events in it, and I have, and I'm speaking to you here today for one and one reason only: to pay respect, reverence, and homage to a great man, His Holiness the Archbishop Metropolitan Andrei Count Sheptitsky. It was the fall of 1942. I don't know whether it was September or October, but it was definitely the fall of 1942. And at the time I lived in a small village known in Polish as Szczerzyc and Ukrainian as Szczerzyc, where my paternal grandparents lived. And my father had arranged, was lucky enough to be, have arranged to have me hidden in the monastery with, uh, by Metropolitan Szeptycki. I had several minutes only with Archiegmon Szeptycki. Uh, I remember my uncle brought me to his uh, palace on the Jasna Gura and uh, he put his hand on my head and uh, sent me, asked uh, somebody 
to take me to one of the priests in, uh, who lived in a village to teach me the language, the prayers, the behavior of Ukrainians. And this was the last time I saw Sheptitsky and I saw my uncle. And uh, this is the, how I was saved. And he spoke to my mother and my mother told him, he asked her questions obviously and she said yes I'm this is we are the two of us now left alive and the rest my husband the child of six uh, who you see on the photograph there my parents everybody's been murdered killed all sorts and the entire family sort of further family you know and I'm the only one left with with Lily here and he said, and, sh and he, listening to her, sort of tears started going down his cheeks. I remember that because I looked at him and he was silent. He just listened and then tears were going down his cheeks. And then he said, he gave instructions to whoever was there, a monk or, or a priest, that Never, never will you separate the mother and this child. They have to be together. The process of integrating children of various cultures, making Jewish children inconspicuous to the ever-searching Gestapo, required discretion and understanding. So I was left in this new world, which I somehow instinctively, I don't remember my own feelings at the time. I'm sure they were very confused but I instinctively felt that I had to adapt to and that my life depended on adapting to this new world. I had to, at the age of seven, I spoke German, which was my native language, and Polish, which my nanny taught me. But now I had to learn Ukrainian. I had to learn the rudiments of those prayers that a seven-year-old would know. Ojcze nasz, Borodzity divo. I had to learn how to read a little bit in Tsarkovnu so that I could follow the prayers in the prayer book. I had to learn how to cross myself and all of the other things that a seven-year-old would normally, living in that culture, know so that I could pass. Daniel Timchina was the head of our orphanage and he was very careful not to show others that we are Jewish. So we are taking baths, either two of us, two of the children, Jewish children, or the third one was bathing with him, not to show our identity. For a seven-year-old, that's a major thing to accomplish. And I know that every time my children, but particularly my grandchildren, reach the age of seven, I would look at them and I would marvel. That I could accomplish that. The Metropolitan used his many personal connections and the wide network of his church in support of this integration and concealment process. We were sent to Ubot, where Mati Humeni was, was the, the, the mother superior, and she took my mother in to her residence. She, she was separate from the actual convent and the orphanage, a little house separately, but, but within, within two steps from each other. And she took my mother, but she said also, don't be afraid, your mother is here and you are here, you are not going to be separated, which was quite wonderful. 
quite wonderful. Here are some of the documents that the Gestapo was looking for me. And gradually, uh, I got used to the, to the work schedule. Uh, we went to a school which was uh, run by a schoolmaster. His name was Duke. Unbeknownst to us, there was a, another five-year-old child with his mother and aunt hidden in the attic of Duke's house. That boy, I eventually became Roald Hoffman, who was the Nobel Prize winner in chemistry and professor of chemistry at Cornell, also a well-recognized poet. Uh, and he was hidden in that, um, in that attic, which we didn't know about. This is a picture of Rabbi Kahane, who was, was saved with his family in the monastery of Sheptitsky and after the war became the chief rabbi of the Polish army and later he became chief rabbi here in Israel of the Air Force and later chief rabbi of the Argentina. There were two other Jewish boys uh, in Univ at the time, uh, Oded, and uh, whose name was Dorco, and Daniel, who is Adam Daniel Rothfeld. And this is a photograph in front of the church with um, Brad Daniel uh, Timchina, and here I am, sullen looking in the back. And this is Oded, Odorko, and this is Daniel. Uh, this is a picture of um, Daniel, I call him Daniel, he's known as Adam Daniel uh, Rothfeld. Uh, this is a photograph that he sent me some years later when he uh, met with the Pope. Um, and he indicated in his letter that he spoke about me with the Pope and the Pope sent his blessings and, and that he thanked in our name uh, the church for doing what it did.